Hello and happy fourth. Uh, I have now finished the last of my sample of Arkansas Black 21, um, which is a sad thing. But it means I am now ready to continue on our series of reviews of American Apple Brandy. Uh, and we're doing Laird's. Laird's. Um, which I have reviewed many, many times in the past, uh, always favorably. Like, basically, if you are really an American spirits nerd, and you're not just a bourbon head who, you know, is fat and wears a golf shirt. No, we don't have Blanton's, by the way. Please leave. Just, just buy your Baden, Basil Hayden's and get out. Um, if you are a real American spirits nerd, you love Laird's. Licensed in 1781, this stuff. Um, that's before we even had our current constitution. They were making apple brandy. Uh, they've since moved on. Um, all the old apple orchards near them were in Jersey were pulled up to make golf horses. They've now moved production to Virginia. And that's a little bit sad. Uh, but still, Laird's is awesome. And today, we've also got uh, some good sparring partners for Laird's. We've got um, a single barrel bottling from Tom's Foolery in Ohio. <clears throat> I've not reviewed anything from Tom's Foolery in probably like two years at this point. So my pal is very angry at me. Like, I am, I love their stuff. I love... Um, just kind of the, the 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 vibe that they bring, uh, particularly with their apple brandy after apple brandy bottlings, but also with their with their whiskeys. Um, and then we got something new. This is French Lick Old Clifty. What? Lick Old? What? What? What channel am I watching again? Uh, <laughs> Spirits of French Lick. Old Clifty, who's your apple brandy? I agree. Uh, this, If I was a marketing guru, this would not have been the brand name that I pick. Uh, but, you know, we're going to go with it. The important thing to know about this is that it is double pot distilled, about four years old, and, oh, by the way, 73.5% alcohol. So let's go. Uh, all right, we're going to start start out with the Laird's. This is the Laird's 10th generation apple brandy. Bottled in Bond, aged five years. This is a special thing they came up with, um, you know, a couple of years ago. I don't know, really know what the occasion is, but I'm very excited to try this. Uh, so it's, it's uh, on paper, this looks a lot like their standard app, uh, bottled in Bond apple brandy. But it's got an extra with an extra year on it. But um, I'm expecting they were cherry picking the barrels involved in this, so I'm really excited to try it. All right, um, I don't know exactly when this came out. Maybe 2020 or so, something like that. 50% um, alcohol by volume, of course. Um, kind of a New Jersey, Virginia uh, uh, cross up sort of project. On the nose, yeah, Laird's just never, they're never going to disappoint. Um, we are getting baked apples in a storm of American oak. Apples, apple cheese, Lithuanian stuff. Um, vanilla, dried cherry, a little touch of sawdust, but not too much. Cinnamon sticks. Sometimes, sometimes layers can get get really heavy into the floral side of things. Like, to you know, it, can, it can start throwing like an old post-war men's cologne kind of note. It isn't. This isn't quite getting there. This is. Um, there's some dried flowers on the on this, but it's much more kind of uh, buttoned down and approachable. Uh, sweet tea, black pepper. 
a little bit of curry powder on this. Um, it's a terrific nose. It reminds me a lot of, I mean, maybe this is inevitable, of the, uh, the single cask Laird's bottlings with a little, you know, leaning a little bit further towards, you know, vanilla candied apple deliciousness and a little bit less towards that kind of crazy floral potpourri cologne thing that these can sometimes do. On the palate, Same kind of story on the palate. Uh, we are getting apples. We are getting apple cheese. Go buy some apple cheese if you haven't uh, done so already. Um, lots of oak. Lots of American oak. Um, but the over overall impression is something lean and very, very good. Very, very well made. If you are um, someone who loves classically built American spirits, rye in particular, and you haven't tried Laird's yet, you really, really need to try some Laird's. This is as good a starting point as any. Um, there is that curry thing. What is that? Yeah, almost like a like a yellow curry kind of thing going on. Black pepper. Um, there's a funny, like, almost briny note in this, like almost sea salt brine um, happening. Which normal, I mean, I mean, you know, Virginia is not, at least central Virginia, where they're getting their, their fruit for this, is not on the coast at all. But I'm kind of getting something slightly coastal, which is weird. Let's run with it. Um, there's certainly that floral note. Cinnamon, clove, allspice. Ooh, cinnamon galore. Um, even some jerk spice in this. Sweet tea. Um... Ginger powder. Um, maybe not sweet tea. Maybe it's more like like asam tea, like overstewed asam tea. Um, really nice. I, I don't know. Pricing-wise, I think this is actually more expensive than some of the single, single cask layers. And I don't know if I like this better. But it's good. Like, and, and certainly, like, certainly worth the money you're paying for it. And I will say that even before adding water. All right, this is uh, fifty percent, so I'm I'm gonna do two squirts. I think that should be about right. That feels about right. Uh, let's move on. All right, Tom's Foolery. From Burton, Ohio. Uh, I'm going to be honest, I, I do not even remember who sent me the sample. But uh, uh, it is single barrel number 114. It is a five-year-old Applejack bottled at 54.88% alcohol by volume. Um, now, the thing about Tom's, there's many things about Tom's foolery. But one of the things is they have a barrel inventory, which sounds very exciting. Oh. Like, I can look up where every single barrel they made end up, you know, going to, right? Not so much. It, it's, uh, they seem to take it out of inventory, like, every, whenever they bottle it. So, it's actually pretty useless from a consumer perspective. But I can kind of guesstimate by the, by the number of barrels. This was probably uh, distilled in, um, in the middle of 2015 sometime. So, Presumably bottled 2020 or 2021. Um, <clears throat> five years old. Uh, I don't know what else to say about this. Let's uh, let's get some notes on the table. I've, I've loved these guys since I've, I've tr first tried their stuff. I wish we could get more here in Illinois. 
Okay, compared to the Lairds, much, much heavier on like the Cinnabons and like that kind of post-war men's cologne sort of note. Um, the Lairds was trying to be more clean about its approach to apple-based distillate. This is kind of happy to let the, uh, uh, the weirder, grungier, more floral side kind of hang out. And I'm all here for it. Uh, vanilla, apples. Apples, but it's it's not just the, the fruit part. This is just as much about like the stems and the skins and the cores. It's it is slightly green. Um, it's hard to nail down exactly what what the the kind of nature of the greenness is. Uh, but there's also a lot a lot of pepper and a lot of curry notes galore um, the sweet tea thing is happening the the almost like the jerk spice thing is happening Kirschwasser um, like cherry eau de vie that's kind of in play here I'm, I'm almost getting like a cherry you know like a like a cherry um, core like a, almost a nutty thing from this but you have to remember while I'm while I'm, while I'm emphasizing the like vegetal nutty quality, there's also like a core of cinnabons that is holding this thing together, and I love it on the palate. So I do love the Lairds. I'm not going to deny that. I, I like this Lairds a lot. But the Tom's Foolery here, it just has a terrific evolution. It's not just a good set of notes and balance. The way this kind of develops in my mouth is extremely impressive. This arrives hard on like candy, candied apples. And you're like, oh, this is going to be a little bit of a sweetheart. This is going to be nice. But no, it develops into like uh, lots of dry oak on the back end, black pepper, um, that kind of like cologne note, but also like the stems and the skins and the core thing. Uh, it's, it's very complex. Impressive. Very apple-y, but also very, very spicy. Um, cinnamon, apple, cheese. I'm not sure if apple curry is a thing. It feels like it should be a thing. Someone should have come up with that. But if it's not, I'm inventing it right here and saying this has a an apple curry kind of character to it. Um... It's a little bit more rustic and a little bit more of a thinker's spirit than the, this Laird's is, this 10th um, generation. Uh, but I'm kind of all here for that. I am excited. Um, okay, let's get some water into this Tom Spoolery here, and we're going to move on. I would guess four squirts. I'm not sure, though. So if you haven't watched the channels before, I'm going to add some water to these and then we'll come back and do kind of a round two just to see how they develop. Not because in any way I think you need to be adding water to spirits all the time. This is just about kind of trying to push pressure on them to see how they react. Um, like if, if good things happen, great. If bad things happen, that tells you something, right? Uh, Let us move on to the French Lick Old Clifty, who's your apple brandy? 
again, this is a seal box pick. I don't know if you can seal that. See that? Uh, barrel 2017, bottle 2022, even though it doesn't say that on the label. This is barrel number 481. Uh, is this number one or something next to the seal box label? I have no idea what that means. Uh, says double pot distilled. It also says respect the grain. I don't know what that means in this context. Um, and yeah, it is 73.5% alcohol. Four, five-ish years old, something like that. At least four years old, put it that way. All right. And um, at this proof, I'm going to have some respect for this. Okay, let's, let's see. I, I think this... I have tried stronger things on this channel. I don't think I have tried um, anything stronger that has been aged, though. So uh, let's take our time here. Even more kind of candied than the um, than the Tom's Foolery is. But it's also just very, very, very nippy. There's the alcohol is very much in play here. I am getting apples and apple cheese, lots and lots of vanilla, black pepper. Um, oh, my poor nose. Cologne chai latte. There's even a slight grassy note in this. Um, there may be other stuff here. It's just kind of too hot to get to it. Like, the alcohol is kind of getting in the way on this for me. It's like I... Like, do they have the driest warehouse in Indiana? Do they just barrel this stuff at 75% what are they doing I don't I don't even know but um, I expect I'm gonna be get be able to get more of this more out of this um, after I add some water on the palette Hail Mary Philip Grace here we go So initial thought, um, damn fine bourbon, high rye MGP comes to mind. So if you are a smoke wagon aficionado, come right on over. But damn fine bourbon that has had a whole bunch of apples dumped into it. Um, so we're getting vanilla, we're getting burned leaves, almost like a, a little bit of a Heaven Hill nod there. Um, Kirschwasser, cherry, black pepper, even slightly herbaceous, a little touch of, of basil in there. God, God the alcohol is, is it's, it's tough to taste beyond. Um, but yeah, beyond those bourbony notes, you are getting apple cheese and like, um, apple O to V, apple brandy. I mean, it's, no, I shouldn't, that sounds silly. Like, I know it's, it is apple brandy, and I shouldn't be saying it tastes like apple brandy, but there is, like, I, I've tried enough apple O to V's that I can kind of, I'm not going to just try to justify that. I'm sorry. Um, it is very, very nippy, though. Lots of alcohol. Um, the mouth, uh, sorry, the mouth length on this, which is a term I use to kind of describe how uh, how deep the spirit goes in my mouth and in, into my throat. The mouth length is quite short. Um, this kind of gets back to the teeth right in front of my molars. I don't know what the term for that is. And that kind of stops there. It's very intense in that range, but it doesn't go beyond that. Um, I got a 
gotta say it's it's a little bit tough drinking this at strength. It's just seventy three odd percent is a lot. So I'm gonna add some water to this. We're gonna try it again in a minute. Two. I don't even know how much water to add. This is so much stronger than I usually deal with. Oh, more than five. Um, six. At least seven. Let's see if that's tamed it. It's actually gotten more intense and more nippy as I've been adding water to it. Oh. At least let's do it one more and I'm gonna call it I'm gonna call it a day. <coughs> I'm gonna stop there because beyond eight squirts is madness. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the Laird's and we're gonna see where, where, what remains of my palate after that. Usually it's not so tough to like taste things as you're proofing them down. They do kind of kind of kick you in the teeth a little bit while, while you're doing that. Just usually, but usually it's just a little bit. With this stuff, good Lord, okay. Uh, Back to the Laird's 10th generation here, on the nose. Not a whole lot of change on the nose of this, uh, this Laird's here. Um, there is a little bit of like a, an apple smoke thing coming through. Not apple wood smoke. I know what that smells like. This isn't quite that. This is more like you have a campfire or something going and you just like throw some some apples on there for some reason. That's kind of what I'm getting. And I mentioned this before and I cut I, I felt kind of crazy. A little bit of a sea salt note. Like I don't associate apples with, you know, like seawater or brininess or, you know, coastal character at all. But now that I'm kind of getting, you know, sea salt and brininess on a couple of these, I'm beginning to wonder if this is just like a, a character in apple brandy that I haven't picked up on before. Yeah, it's definitely there. Um, on the palate, here we go. Yeah, that's really good. Um, again, the only problem with this is is itself. It's is the um, the various single cask lairds out there you can buy for at least the same money as this, if, if possibly less money. Um, that's the only problem. This is fantastic. Uh, hard to argue with this as a, like, just a classic American spirit. Like, it's good. It is it's it is spicy apple ice cream at this point. And it's brilliant. I, I really like this. And in terms of like the the the, the range of character layers can can rep, can uh, can present, this is definitely leaning more towards the like clean wood and apple side of things, and further away from the you know weird flowers and cologne side of things that they can do. Um, but I'm kind of okay with that. Eighty six points, eighty six points for this Laird's. Um, definitely recommended. Unless you can get a single cask instead, in which case buy that. Um, moving on.
back to the Tom's Foolery here. Um, I'm very curious to see what this does with water. Ooh. So those cologne notes I was getting before are still there, but they've it's almost like developed into a full-blown herbaceous side. But it's an herbaceous side kind of existing right alongside the like Cinnabon and like dessert apple and vanilla side of this thing. Yeah, it's like, it smells like apple and spearmint. And fuck, I love it. This is, this, this is good stuff. Okay, on the palette, here we go. Yeah, what gets me about this is the way it kind of develops in your mouth. It's it's um because again it, it it arrives very kind of fresh apple-y, and then it just gets more and more spicy and herbaceous as it moves back. Um, I really dig this. Again, if you are at all a fan of American spirits, you need to be, you know, drink some apple brandy. Like, these are just so good. Um, man, I need to source some, some Tom's Foolery somehow. I, I just need to get a, a hold of more of their stuff. Um, the herbaceous, spicy apple perfection on, the, you know, on this is, is extraordinary. I love this. It's just, it's just really good. This is really good. Um, I'm not going to go crazy score wise. I'm going to call this like an 87 plus, but I mean, there's something. This reminds me of a lot of what I just really love about American spirits broadly. Like what I love about, you know, wild turkey rare breed, that is here. That is happening in this bottle. Um, and I just, it feels like I should get more notice. Really good. 87 points for this uh, particular Tom's Foolery. Really nice. Um, and finally, the, uh, the old Clifty. Proofed down from 73.5 to whatever this is. Let's see if I can get anything else on the nose now that there's going to be a little bit less alcohol nip. Huh. I was talking about that kind of sea salty maritime note before. This might actually be the most maritime of the bunch, and it is from Indiana. Yeah, it smells like like apples burned, you know, buried by the beach. Uh, like apples you left by the seaside and the tide just kind of came in and covered them in sand. That's kind of what I'm smelling. It is apples plus salt plus minerality. Oh, I love it. Um, there's aspects of this that remind me of like a good white burgundy, like a good white Chablis or something. With the exception that there is m way more like obnoxious American oak on this than you would ever, ever, ever see on, uh, on a burgundy. Lots of vanilla to kind of like uh, counteract those kind of spicy maritime apple notes. Fun. Okay, let's see what happens on the palette. Oh, 
<coughs> God, it's still kicking me in. The I gave this eight squirts of water, and it is still going. Man. Let's go to nine. I'm going to go to nine. Um, very smoky, very, very, very spicy, but also kind of like candied at the same time. Like there is almost like an apple candy thing going on here. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, this is like, it's, it's bourbon, you know, again, like high rye MGP comes to mind. Bourbon plus apples plus smoke, and you got it. Um, definitely kind of, kind of brutal, and I think the, the strength may be playing into that. Like, it's, I respect them for releasing it at, at this strength. I don't know if I really want to babysit something of this strength. Uh, I would be much happier if this were just released bottled at 50%. I, ju I just would. Um, but the quality is certainly there. Um, I'm going to give this 86 plus. 86 plus uh, out of 100. It's very good. Um, so to my shock and surprise, the uh, the Lairds actually loses this fight twice over. In fact, um, eighty six points for the Lairds tenth generation. The uh, the Tom's Foolery Barrel one fourteen gets eighty seven. I I really like this. I just I like the way it. It just, it has a story to tell in my mouth. I appreciate that. And the uh, French Lick Old Clifty from Seal Box gets uh, an 86 plus. And uh, yeah, I hope this catches on. I also hope if it doesn't catch on, they keep it out there under a different name. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching. Happy Independence Day and, uh, and cheers.